I'd like to have a little chat about composition and artist license, I suppose. I was in Marrakesh, lucky lady that I am, actually planning a painting holiday for next November. Uh, more of that another time. But I was there also with somebody who was painting, I was teaching, and we decided to do a little sketch of some urns. Now, this was the photograph. What we actually had was these urns here, and these columns which went much higher up, but it made the composition very tall and thin and, you know, the, the real focus, as I often say to you, what's your motivation for painting, was these urns. They had different colours and different textures as well as being different shapes and sizes. So that's what we wanted to do. Now, that's the beginning of mine. Let me just take that out of the way so you're not distracted. I decided to go landscape because I wanted to have room for some of the bougainvillea here and it was really the height of these pots that interested me the most and, and the, the way they work together. So that was it in its initial stages. My companion, however, decided to go landscape and in fact kept that pull this back down, sorry, kept that big one in. I decided to get rid of it on my composition because I just thought it was a bit, well, it, it didn't hold that much interest for me. But she did this one here that's got quite a nice landscape construction. And it's quite interesting. Remember, you don't have to have a nice, neat area around everything. What she's done here is bled off when we talk about something bleeding off, we mean that the colour, the print, the text, whatever, goes off the page. It goes off the printed area. It's a, an old printer's term. To bleed off, it goes off the printed area. Otherwise, you have it framed in an area. So it's a, you do it a lot, probably, without thinking when you're painting and when you take photographs. So it's quite nice that she's actually bled this big pot off and she's maintained the other four. Now, going back to mine, I have used, I'll explain the, the techniques that I've used on this. It's okay, I'm not that excited about it, but it was, it was a fun thing to have a little play with. So I've got this pot here. This one has ridges on. This one had a pattern on originally, but I wasn't that bothered by the pattern, so I decided not to include it. And this one I really quite liked because it's a very rugged, um, it's like a bread crust. It's not smooth. It's got lots of indentations and such on it. So I decided I quite liked that surface. So what I've done, I've got my light coming from this area. Remember, when you are painting, decide where your light's coming from. Now, if the scenes change or you go back to another time or whatever, it doesn't matter, but you decide and you stay with it. So we've got a lot of light out here, and then we've got light seeping in here, but the pots are casting these shadows. Also, that side of the square column is in shadow and that side of the square column is also slightly darker. So that's what the setup was with that. This is the bougainvillea coming down from the outside of the building. And so what I've done, which is what I do with a lot of my greenery, those of you who've done more of my courses will know. Just let me zoom in a little bit so you can see. Whoops, wrong way. I tend to do, because this is this is a dense piece of greenery, so what I do is I tend to put a big area of very wet greenery and then I start to accentuate the leaf shapes coming out from the main area of green. And this is the dark bit, okay the light's over here, so this is the dark bit, so there's more dark in that. Likewise I put a shadow down the side of the, the main stem there. I'll just zoom back out so you can look at the hole. Okay, and some of it is coming in round the outside. 
the flowers were in fact white and I was going to uh, make it so but decided it wasn't that effective, it wasn't a, a big enough contrast the white of the bougainvillea, it wasn't strong enough to stand out and I didn't really want to introduce another colour so I didn't introduce a pink, a purple or a red one I decided just to leave it green the techniques I've used is obviously wet on wet with lots of areas and just let the, the, the runs, the blooms happen and I've also used the uh, sand sandpaper with watercolour pencil particularly on this pot here because I wanted to get this very rough crusty sort of effect so that is basically that what I want to say to you is please remember your colour values, okay? We've got light here, light on that side of the pot, darker there, very dark under there, the pot's tilted, there's hardly any light getting in there. Compositionally, it's okay, I'll probably do it again actually. It's a bit centred, I too could have probably cropped something off a bit more, but I might do it again, this time with less um, detail on it if you like. Also I just want to point something out and I'll zoom back in. Just bear with me a minute. That camera focused yet? I hope you can see the detail of the laying of the the slabs, the bricks. I decided to do away with that because it wouldn't really mean anything to the viewer just hold that down. They had an edge round it and then they were laid in a sort of a herring bone pattern but doing it for this picture, I will zoom out again, I just decided to just put an impression of some of the tiles. So it's a question of knowing when to leave things out. I often have this conversation with students. You may know what it is uh, but other people looking at it, it might not make sense. Also just check perspective, that pot's a lot lower so I can actually see the top of it, where are these are sort of on my horizon so I don't see in the top but of course we've got the curves here because they're round objects. So just give yourself time. I'm always saying look, look, look again when you're looking at a composition. You know, you don't have to do what's there. You could go from different angles. You can crop it and accentuate or emphasise the areas that you really like. Maybe it's the shape that's really catching your eye or the colours or the textures. So that's just a little bit of a pep talk, if you like, on composition and artist license. Enjoy your painting.